Hey everybody, Pastor Scott Ardery with the Pentecostal Community Church. Always a privilege to share with you something, and I pray today that we have something that will bless you and encourage you, strengthen you, direct you, guide you, however the Lord, the Lord chooses to use that. That's the way we want Him to do it. So I hope and pray that you and your family are well, and I pray that the school has gotten off to a good start for you if you've got kids in school still. And uh, I pray we have more good weather for uh, a couple months, I hope at least. We will soon find out. Hey, I want to talk to you today for a couple moments on a topic of the power of public opinion. The power of public opinion. Let me read to you a text. I'm going to begin reading in Acts chapter 4. Read the first two verses, two and a half verses, then jump down. It says, And as they spake unto the people, the priests the captains of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they, the apostles, taught the the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead, and they laid hands on them and put them in a hold until the next day. Now, they bring them out to to, uh, try them, if you please, and Peter begins to preach and, and teach them Uh, the things of the gospel. In verse 13, it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Now, let me take a pause, if I might, for a moment, and let's talk about public opinion. You know, the Internet has certainly... uh, Uh, brought more attention to this subject than we ever probably would have imagined, more than I ever would have imagined, for sure. And, uh, you know, it just seems uh, when you get online that everybody's got something to say. And what people have learned is, is that there's power in public opinion. They've learned that if you say enough, and you put enough pressure that you can get somebody to bend or to buckle or to move in the direction that you want them to move. It's all about fulfilling uh, individual will. Now, if we look at that for a moment in the political spectrum, we, we see that uh, when, when somebody, what we call, commits political suicide, they say something or do something, it, it may be so egregious or illegal that, uh, that they have no political future. And, 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 or, or if we could just water that down a bit and we could say when somebody takes a stand on a position that they, uh, they feel very passionately against the position, what we do is we begin to we start the machine of public opinion. And the goal, in many cases, is to drum up enough, enough opposition, enough people saying something, that you persuade the individual or individuals to do what you would have them to do. Now, the problem, and I hope that you can follow me here, the problem we have in our world today is uh, you've got people that want to push their own agendas or their own feelings on a matter. And and, and, and one such example uh, could be uh, when you think of a church. Uh, I've never been a fan of people going out and standing on street corners holding signs condemning a certain type of sin because, uh, you you know, I, I think we're pushing something in an arena that, that we weren't really meant to push. Uh, if God calls you to do that, then you sort that out with the Lord. I'm just saying I've not been a fan of that uh, because normally it just drums up more hostility than anything. And so what, 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 is, what is someone doing, though? From a, a church perspective, we're trying to promote or push you know, our ideologies or our beliefs. And although I believe very much in the gospel, I believe the gospel is the sovereign word of God. It's unchangeable, the Old Testament and the New. I don't believe that we can alter any form of it. I also 
don't want to force somebody into believing what I believe. That, that's not what the gospel is about. That's not who Jesus was. And so sometimes, you know, everybody or anybody can misuse what they have to force an opinion. And so our world has come to this place where if you feel passionately about something enough, just drum up enough support and you can sway things to move one way or another. I hope that makes some sense. I'm not trying to talk in circles. And so when, you, when, when we go back to this concept of, of the power of public opinion, understand that what people say can paralyze somebody. It can paralyze you. If you say it enough or you say it boldly enough or you just you could you could spread something, whether it's true or not, it could absolutely paralyze a person. And uh, you know, I've talked to people in the political arena lately who've told me that they, they no longer really want to do this because people are just merciless or they're they can be ruthless and and and, and they, they what they're doing is they're trying to put so much public pressure on an individual that doesn't see eye to eye with them uh, that they could get them to break or to bend. And the power of public opinion is it's a real thing. And it has a real impact. And sometimes that's good and, and sometimes it's not. So what you say can paralyze somebody and what you say can propel them forward in the same token. It's not always a negative. Uh, if you have strong public support, it can propel an individual forward uh, and, and help them accomplish the goals that they are trying to accomplish. So understand that the spirit of darkness of this world has, for lack of better words, learned that people can be controlled by the words of the public. And why that's dangerous, why it's very dangerous is because it can shut you know, the mouth of an ambassador bound by Christ, it can shut them down. Uh, it can shut testimonies down that need to be shared. It, it can temper boldness, if you please. Uh, in the text that we read, the Bible says Peter facing all of this pressure, public pressure because of the gospel that he preached and the message that he preached uh, because truth is sometimes people just don't like what you preach it doesn't matter if you're a christian or not sometimes they don't like the way you say it or what you say or when you say it or how you say it and so that public pressure begins to ratchet up and we've become masters at name calling and and accusing people of things that in many cases just aren't true in an effort to ratchet up public pressure well that's what they did to peter they really ratcheted up this public pressure and when it would not work when peter would not bend when he would not renounce or change his position on the gospel, the Bible says that when they saw his boldness of Peter and John and they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant, these were not educated men. Uh, they were ignorant men according to society's standards, but they spoke with such boldness. It says they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They understood that these men are only speaking the way they are because they have been with Jesus. Jesus has put this in them. And so Peter, fortunately for us, did not bend or buckle or break to this power of public opinion. Let me tell you one more quick story. Uh, my favorite, favorite uh, figurehead in the Bible of all time is, is the prophet Jeremiah. In, in the, God told Jeremiah, when he told him to go to Israel and to preach, he said, don't look on their faces. He said, but look over their heads. Why? Because, because when, when Jeremiah would preach, and he would see the displeasure in their faces, in their eyes. It could cause Jeremiah to begin to move from his message. And it could cause him to begin to sway in a direction that the Lord did not want him to go. And because the power of public opinion, can, it can change the course of a sermon. And sermons are not supposed to be driven by political correctness. They're supposed to be driven by the word of God. And so God told Jeremiah, don't look at the people. I don't want the looks on their faces to persuade you or intimidate you into changing the course of this message that I am going to put in your mouth and in your heart. And so God, in all of his wisdom, 
knows this power of public opinion. And it's never changed. It's always been a part of us. It's always been here. And so here, here's my point. Here's what I wanted to say to you today. And that is, we live in a very, a very pressing time. And, 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 and people can be ruthless. And, 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 and many times, people don't care who they might hurt or what, what, what damage they might do to an individual's family or reputation, what have you. So when they ratchet up the pressure that they do. And, 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 and so I say to you today, in your walk with God, in your relationship, it's important that you do not buckle to the power of public opinion. It's critical that you find the same boldness that Peter found and that you walk in the same footsteps that he walked. Not arrogance. We're not talking about arrogance. Boldness and arrogance are not the same thing. They are distinctly different. Political leaders are subjugated by public opinion. And people uh, have even taken their life uh, because of this power of public opinion. As Christians, we cannot allow ourselves to be held hostage by public opinion. You cannot allow somebody to change your beliefs because of, because of outside pressure. You cannot allow them to cause you to question the truth of the Word of God because of outside pressure. Because those voices can get so loud and they can be so forceful that it can cause even the strongest to, to begin to doubt or, or begin to waver under the weight of that public opinion. And so I've just come to you today talking to you and for you to ask you and encourage you, do not allow yourself to be affected by the power of public opinion. I think we should always take a person's uh, thoughts into consideration, but that's where it goes. Uh, we need to be like Jeremiah and don't look at their faces if need be uh, because we don't, want, we don't want people to change what God may put in our heart in order for somebody, because only the truth will set us free. Only the truth sets somebody free. And so we've got to hold fast to the truth. We've got to hold fast to what we know is the truth in the Word of God. We cannot allow politics and politicians who are, again, subjugated by public opinion to determine what we preach in our pulpits and determine what the truth of the Word of God is. And we cannot allow them to take away the truth of the Word of God, to write it off as being obsolete or irrelevant. It's all relevant for us. It is, it is the, the holy Word of God. And the power of public opinion can change anything if you allow it. So I encourage you today, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might, as the Bible says. And when you find yourself weak or wavering, go find a place and just whisper, Lord, I need strength from heaven. I need the strength of God right now. I need the strength of angels because I do not want to sway under this, this new age uh, pressure of public opinion. And, uh, and, 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 and God will answer you. He will hear you and he will give you exactly what you need. Hey. I love you. It's a privilege to speak with you and share with you. If we can be a blessing, visit us on our website at pentecostalcc.org, P-E-N-T-E-C-O-S-T-A-L dot O-R-G. Click that email link in the middle of the screen, or you can reach us on Facebook if you'd like and send us a message. Love, love to hear from you. You can also find us on YouTube every week. Our Jefferson campus, our service is at 10 a.m. Going to be starting here in about 40 minutes. Love to have you. Love to meet you. Love for you to meet us. Or you can go to an afternoon service if you want. Or if you live in Ashtabula, our Ashtabula campus is at 1 p.m. It's on Shepherd Road, right at the end of Shepherd Road, off of Route 20, right down from the Saybrook Plaza. And uh, if you live in the Conneaut area or you want to drive for a later service, you can visit us at our Conneaut campus uh, at 660 Clinton Avenue, Clinton and Lakeview intersection, not far off the Lake Shore. We would love to meet you 5 p.m. there on Sundays. Uh, 5 p.m. Anyway, hey, it's been a privilege. It's been an honor to share with you. I pray in the precious name of Jesus that something that I said uh, has helped you, impacted you, encouraged you, strengthened you, or challenged you in some way that the Lord's will in your life would be fulfilled. 
I love you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, we'll talk to you next week.